It reminds me, <laughs> after we won the uh, top 14 one year in, in France, I gave Johnny Wilkinson, I managed to get the, get the underpants band <laughs> over Johnny's head. <laughs> His little feet were just like toe tapping. <laughs> Welcome to a very different looking Aussie rugby show this week. I'm Louise Ranson. We're at Parisha. It is great to be at the snow. Drew Mitchell, Stephen Hoyles, Sean Maloney alongside me. Guys, who's looking good, Hoyles? You're our sort of resident snow expert amongst us. I'm probably the most experienced. This is the person I can rev up to go and say, I think you'll do well on that jump over there, Drew. Drew, the last one we were here. <laughs> yeah, badly. Yeah, that, 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 that didn't, didn't go you. well for me. And unfortunately, <laughs> today I haven't hired a helmet. <laughs> <laughs> Please don't try and coerce me into just some jumps because I will do them, especially with this type of stuff in my system. But uh, I want to stay injury free. Okay, a uh, really strong rugby uh, community up here. Sean, what are you, what are you going to tell Look, us about we've, it? We've got a long association with the Ginderbine Bush Pigs. It's one of the great names in world rugby, the Bush Pigs, and there's the Miss Piggies. Miss well, Piggies, yeah. obviously so, the female yeah. size. Yeah. Yeah. I think this year is the, the record number of teams that the, the Bush oh, Pigs or the Miss Piggies have had. They're a great club. Oh. A great club led around by Dion. Dion, uh, club the legend Dion. Machine. What about this? Last time we hear Dion tells me that he scores 50 points in a half in a for half. the Bush Pigs. Didn't kick a goal. Just 10 tries for the Dion man. That's some stats. Yeah, what they, would Dion do? they love it down here. The Bush Pigs are great. Yeah. What, what, would Dion Dion do? what would Dion do? What would Dion do? Every day, what would yourself. he do? Uh, we're going to go there tomorrow night and help him out with a bit of training session. Yeah, yeah. yeah nice. See Dion's up there. Dion's up there. OK, guys, from the weekend, what got you? Who's going to kick things off? I will. You know what got me? I got the feels. I spent the weekend down. First thing, I had a night with my family, my brother and his family. Didn't, you know, basically won Uncle of the Year again for the eight years straight, but then also... You're not up against much. <laughs> <laughs> what are you saying about my other brother? <laughs> um, but I got to meet Little Winter Giddo. I had a night with the Giddos as well. My, my French family, it was nice to sort of get back there and, and, uh, and spend some time with the boys, Levi and Kai, but also to meet Little Winter. She's absolutely Lovely photo gorgeous. of the yeah. family yeah, that you've nice. jumped yeah, in myself, on again, Drew. Myself, myself gets in... Uh, you know, we we're so happy that we finally got our girl, so um, <laughs> yeah. we're all pretty happy. Oh, I'm happy for you, Drew. Look, what got me? Carl and Isles. Yeah. Uh, Sevens at the moment is, is in a bit of a holding State pattern. of flux. State of flux, some Sorry, would say. we just got the snow plough, but keep I, going. I think they're going to pick up our good friend Morgan <laughs> to an area. I think it's a snow rescue at the he's moment. He's not good on the skis. No, he's not, is he? Uh, Carl and Isles, he ran a 10-3-4 for 100 metre sprint. That's pretty quick. Um, I, think he's, I think he's a 10... And hey, mate, I'm trying to talk about Carl and <laughs> wrap it up. Um, we need that plough to be as quick as Carl and Isles. <laughs> 10, 3, 4, pretty quick. Yeah, yeah, that's not bad. That's not bad going. Uh, look, my what got you is more of a what might get us because the last oh. time I actually skied was with Brian O'Driscoll in Vancouver. Hang on. And Just picking up that yeah, name. Yeah, there you go. Well, Rugby Hall of Fame. Is that, is that when you were on that, uh, that that thing? What was it? The Sevens Tour that actually yeah. <laughs> well, was a thing as well at one point? Don't bring the mood down, mate. Anyway, the last time I was there with him, it ends up in absolute tears. Took him down a blue run. He was clearly not ready for it. Grouse Mountain, I believe. Grouse Mountain. Ended up with 26 stitches in his knee and on the back of a medicap. So he's hoping I don't get got when I have a crack. Mate, before we started filming, there's a couple of ravens sitting up on the, on the ledge as well. I'm not sure if that's a good indicator either. Lou, yours? Oh, uh, mine. OK, so how many sideline interviews have I done on the sideline of a rugby field? A new low, will we call it? Uh, a high? A high, I don't know what it was. So, Shoot Shield interviewing the Gordon captain, Geordie, and he's got a blood nose just as he comes over to do, do, do the interview. It's dripping, it's dripping. At the end, he goes, oh, I'm sorry. And I look down and I have got just splatters of blood all what on was my your jacket. Coat? It was an expensive coat. What was it? What brand was it? It's a Burberry <laughs> coat. So Burberry, so Burberry if you want to give her a new coat, yeah. you're more than welcome to send a couple into the show. Uh, you can a new coat, cross... Burberry, that's what it is. But Burberry coat. To Jordan's credit, he came out after the game, found you, apologised. Yeah. Even when he was doing it, the poor boy, he knew it was happening. Was I'm like... telling you, apologies don't get stained. <laughs> <out, mate. laughs> so, you know what? How about you apologise by buying another one? Take Lou over to Westfield or Chatsworth and get it done. Something. Westfield? Uh, yeah, Westfield. No, another no, potential sponsor. Guys, if you don't mind, guys, if you're watching, I'm not going to be rude. 
food, but I just, I'm, I'm squinting a lot, so okay. if you don't mind, okay. I'm just going yeah. yeah. to have to roll. Right, that's yeah. a decent uh, run of what got you. Super Rugby rocks and diamonds, what you liked, what you didn't like from across the weekend. Hoylesey, what do you, you got? Rocks and diamonds, I'm going to go Brad Wilkin. So Brad, for those who don't know, the rock part of it, he's had, I think, I'm going to say at least four, maybe five reconstructions, oh, knees and shoulders, oh, wow. over the last four or five years. This yeah. is a guy who was, you know, he was dubbed the next best thing coming out of school. Mm. The, he's battled, he was at the Tars, he played some rugby. He finally got to play for the Rebels after a long off-season and he played really well, scored that try and, and the support he got from his teammates, I thought that was a nice yeah. moment. And also, Bobby Tuttle, first game back in Super Rugby after something like 650 days out. Injured. Yeah, good on both of them for yeah. staying at it, yeah? Uh, my diamonds was i don't know if you saw it in the waratah footage it was a bit of a like a melee bit of yeah, you know like a, a modern day fight in rugby where no one actually fights but an atomic wedgie jack yeah. Tempsey goes up behind uh, he's Blythe, out yeah, there and, he? and then just grabs him oh, he's out there <laughs> he's so out there <laughs> and he's he's just trying, a touch out there it reminds me <laughs> after we won the uh top 14 one year in, in france i gave Johnny Wilkinson. He, oh. he, look, he, Johnny just doesn't drink that, that is, often. Is that name? Yeah. yeah, sorry. Um, <laughs> he doesn't drink that often, but you know, on this occasion he did, and I managed to get the, get the underpants banned <laughs> over Johnny's head. <laughs> His little feet were just like tapping on the on the uh, on the ground. I hope I can find the. Do you know, at school, That's through right, year three. eleven, I had that happen to me about. <laughs> No joke, about 15 times to the point where my mum came and asked, is everything all right at school? Why am I buying you so many Rio multi-packs here? I'm like, wait, why don't you just go free ball and have to give them nothing to grab? I don't know. I didn't think um, of that at the time. But my, OK, my, uh, my rock would be... Well, the fact that... Well, there's that Raven Johnny. I'm not feeling it. Uh, my, my, my rock would be the fact that Scott Robinson didn't dance after the, the Crusaders, um, you know, like, clinched the, the, the... Yeah, but there's still another title. round to go. Yeah, well, that's what he said. He's come out saying that he feels like it'd be disrespectful, they've still got a job to do next week, and that's, you know, that's the professionalism of the, the Crusaders. Don't sort of rub it in, I suppose, and have the respect before it's done. But, geez, I hope we, we see him break down Well, that's why Rock and Diamond, the, the next week they're not playing for anything over in New Zealand, such as being the quality. They are really tearing it's it up here. It's a pack of them there now, Marisha. yeah. Uh, so <laughs> my, my Rock is that next week, essentially, they're not playing for anything. Oh, look, that's every time be... that happens... <laughs> <laughs> I'm just going to have to do this. And the uh, the Diamond is just the Crusaders who just keep winning, Lou. They just can't stop winning. They're oh. unbelievable. What a powerhouse. How about you? Um, Friday night, the weather uh, for the Aussie game, atrocious. But you know what? That's my rock. The Diamond from it, though, is that the Rebels played really good wet yeah. weather footy. And how much are we talking Amazing. about? The, the Rebels. The fact that, that mm. we wanted... Go the Rebels. <laughs> I love the Rebels. <laughs> that we need Aussie Both sides Melbourne to play well in different conditions. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. I mean, there's, there's been so many times, in, in especially, obviously, the, the Derby games, but also in wet weather and trying conditions, the games really sort of tighten up and perhaps some decision-making around how to control the game has sort of probably gone amiss in the past. But I thought the Rebels, and like you say, Lou, the Rebels really controlled the game. They, they, they pushed their hand when the opportunities were there, but they also... You know, I guess made the right decisions about containing it and playing tight when they had to. The, as well. the big shift for the Rebels, in in my opinion, watching that game is they played a, a good brand of wet weather rugby. Matt Tamua was world class number twelve yeah. standard the other yeah. night. Do you know yeah, what the irony good. is? He doesn't want to play twelve. Yeah, but he, but said, he said to me time and time again the other week when I caught up, yeah. with him, I don't want to play twelve. I want to play ten. Sure, and I, I wanted to play different positions well, a lot I'm, of the time. I wanted to play prop, mate. Yeah, yeah. Like there's the thing is, I think Matty Tamua can be one of the best number 12s yeah. at world at world level if he stays in that position. Jeez, he was hitting hard the oh, other night. Yeah, I, I, thought yeah. Was, I thought he was outstanding. And, and Deegan at number 10 allows mm. him to do Don't his thing. Don't start talking about the Rebels. You He's on the bandwagon now. Oh, I'm still hoping they're not in the competition <laughs> next year. I'm not going back from that. Well, that's you, Double not down. us. No, yeah. it's not. It's, I, I want four teams. We'll talk about that later. I, I'm still got a concern with the... Either the, the quality of depth here. I don't know sure. why you've dragged me here again, Drew, but we are... <laughs> good rocks and diamonds, though. Yep. Yeah, good, rocks, <laughs> good rocks and diamonds. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, big stories of the week. Let's check them out. Uh, we spoke last week about New Zealand uh, Super Rugby competition not having a final series. So they're sort of done and dusted. The Australian teams, there's four out of five that can still make finals. We happy with what we said last week? We still of that we same opinion? Can we just recap some of the comments <laughs> oh, directed uh, couple of our absolute... way by the... And lemons from across the ditch. <laughs> the, the, the socials, the mate. Well, they paid. didn't even watch the clip. They just went the headline and just thought, I'm just going to tap away. Bait. That's great yeah, work I from the editors it. at Rugby Pass. But yeah. they were so fired up over it. Maybe <laughs> didn't really read through it. I think through it's it. the Kiwis that live in Australia. The think? ones that, that just don't like you and Drew. No, they want to, they want to be patriotic. <laughs> They've left the country. They live in yeah. our lands. 
and they want to be proud New Zealanders, so they just spray Aussies on social media. And they're, feel, they're feeling because we've got COVID and New Zealand don't. <laughs> I, thought it, I thought it was hilarious was that um, producer Kneeboy uh, jumped on there and started replying on our behalf on the Aussie Rugby Show <laughs> yeah. Instagram page. Just chapping them a little bit more until they it, eventually flipped out completely. I don't think at any stage we said that their standard of footy no, is, no, is, no. is worse than ours. Sean I actually was think, very quick to I'm, point I'm, out sorry, that's yeah, not what we were saying. I'm quite clearly yeah, yeah, yeah. going to say that the standard over there is, is far better than their standard of us. That's the five versus five argument. But, um, yeah, I, they, they did react. <laughs> but I'd love to see them have a final series. Commercially, when the game's struggling financially all around the world, I think now if they had their time again, they would go back and do a final well, series. Well, you know, I think if you look at it... they've got the North-South game. They yeah, they've got the North-South game. North game. They've also got a round of Super Rugby this weekend that means nothing, Yeah, right? Like, okay. I mean, of course, there's got to be a, a fair bit of pride and I'm sure mate, perhaps some of the provinces playing for mm. some uh, you know, trophies in between the, like, the, the provinces. But outside of that, they're not playing for anything. Like, yeah. they, they need to... Like, there needed to be uh, a final, at least a final, or like like the Aussies have 2v3 to meet first in, no, a, in the we, GF. No, we disproved that <laughs> But whatever week. it is, it just it, 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 it stops Some type a, of a dead rubber round, yep. like a whole round. Yeah. Uh, so, guys, the other big story we were looking at is Michael Hooper. He was Waratah's captain over the weekend with Rob Simmons being ruled out through injury. Did a very good job. Big win yep. by the Tars. I guess the, the question is, though, should he still be Wallabies captain? What, what are your oh, thoughts on I it? I don't think there's even a question, yeah. is there? I thought you were going to say Waratah's captain. I was going to say, no, let Rob Simmons con- continue doing that. But yeah. Wallaby captain, absolutely. Like, in... For a number of reasons. The other one is who else is there? And I think Alan Alataro is a really good emerging leader. He'll come through, yeah. But, but Michael Hooper is a is a genuine leader. He's doing everything that's right for Australian rugby. He has done from day dot. Every time you hear him speak, he's impressing me more and more with where he wants to take his career and how he wants to be here for the entirety of it. He, he do, you don't deserve that. Like, I think you, you earn, you earn it. it. And yeah, he's, yeah. he's definitely earned it, and, and I hope he keeps it. I mean, I saw some stuff over the weekend saying... Did he do enough to ward off any competition for his spot at number seven? I, I think Come that's on. absolutely ridiculous. Yeah. Is, is people seriously there's some, still there's some good back rowers. Don't get me wrong, there are good back rowers coming up, through, but, but they're, not, they're not at his level yet. But here's the thing with him. Because he wears number seven on his back, everyone expects him to be Pocock or George Smith but and mate, get over the ball. But that, that isn't the strength of his game. But, but his numbers at the breakdown, are honestly, they're underrated. Like they, yeah. they don't go spoken about enough because he's so good in other areas. Like He's put a lot of work in the last couple of years, getting on that ball, getting the turnovers, and in crucial moments as well, he's coming up with them. So, like, But it's still not not the strongest yeah, part sure. of his game yeah. because of how good he is at running the ball and his front on defence and his work rate. Like, do yourself a favour, watch Michael Hooper closely at the 30th minute mark and look how dirty he is compared to the rest of the team. Like, he just works himself and he's done this for eight years straight, mm. 35 games a year, absolutely, with no, no question. He's the other thing captain. that he's got going really nicely is a good dynamic with Matt Tamua as leaders of that yep. team. They're, yep. they're very tight. They talk about things not just rugby related. Like they, They're very deep thinkers around the game. So that's a really nice setup between them. It can't be any question for me that Michael Hooper yeah, should be. Agreed. And that's a good VC, Matty Tamua, I think, at yeah. 12. Yep. Yep. Back again this week, gone but not forgotten, where we take some time to remember some of our favourite uh, rugby players from the past for their efforts both on and off the field. This week, we're here at the snow. We brought a wallaby mate, Morgan Tuanui, with us. I thought we'd talk about Morgs. There's so many things we could talk about with Morgs, but I, I wanted to start quickly. He, he uh, He's renowned for being a bit of a punter. He likes his horses. He gets right in, does a fair amount of research. And back in 2000. Uh, in three, when the Rugby World Cup was here in Australia, and um, more specifically Sydney at the time, uh, the Wallabies were in camp, and he was a celebrity punter for the, the Daily Telegraph, I believe, and he, he picked his, t- uh, his first four. Uh, two days, I think, it was in the paper, two days before the, the Melbourne Cup had run. The Wallabies also do, like, a Calcutta, so you get in little groups or partners or whatever, and you bid, and, you you know, it's a bit of a raffle, but you, you base- it's worth about 25 grand to the winner. Like, it's... And especially in those days, there were some heavy punters. Todd Kefu, with Jeremy Paul, Carl yeah, yeah. Finnegan. Like, yeah. you know, like there were some, some big guys that put out a, a fair amount of cash. So it was worth your while to kind of get involved but to, to, to win it as well. Anyway, a couple of days later, Melbourne Cup's run. Morgs has got, I think, 70 or 80% of the top four, first four, plus 120% of the trifecta. He's picked up 120 grand from that punting, plus the 25 grand from the Calcutta. So he's going into training, like, absolutely peacocking, you know, just like chest out, going, you know, just like his hamstrings are never been so limber. <laughs> just sitting there, just brushing the, brushing the grass. And as you could imagine, Eddie Jones is like, mate. Drop one football. Drop one drop football, one you're gone. You can go be a f-ing professional punter <laughs> if you want. Uh, but, I think he thought about it. Yeah, I think, <laughs> why wouldn't you, yeah. really? Like, <laughs> well, yeah. fast forward a year. Uh, club rugby, and this is long before the. Uh, what was it? We have to sign off now. We have to win our integrity. Every year, yeah. players have to do the integrity. I, I should say, just say, 
Gamble responsibly. Yeah, bet over your head, not with it. Um, but <laughs> oh, used to, and also, yeah. for any potential sports betting companies who want to get involved with the show, please get on speak board. on their boy. <laughs> but, uh, so fast forward a year and back at club footy, there was, there was betting on club footy and we had a good side and you just backed yourself win 13 plus. And I actually think it really brought out the best in our team. Hey, because this is, this know, is breaking. You guys used to bet on yourself. That's, that's actually not allowed. Anyway, well, we didn't know what was going on one day, but it was the last play of the game. What's going on? Who put this betting slip in my hand? Right. So, and that's six grand. But Morgan, Morgan needed the win to get 13 plus, and we're up by nine or whatever it was on the bell. He changes positions with someone like he's in the under 10s, goes from 13 to 12, gets the ball and runs around the whole team and scores in the corner. Like, didn't do anything for 79 minutes, <laughs> but decides when it needs to be 13 plus, he'll push the other kid out of his position and run around him. And then get, throwing the ball up in the air like we've won the grand final. What's Morgs going on about? Like, I later worked it out and got along with it. And, so he's yeah. a punter. Yeah, he's a punter. But he's yeah. doing great stuff with the Classic Wallabies. Yeah, you guys yeah. give that the plug and I'll grab the, the kid. Well, we're going to be down here with the Classic Wallabies. Well, Tomorrow night is. we're going to do some stuff with the bush pigs and you can actually buy this piece of this merch is awesome. on yeah. classicwallabies.com.au so and Morgs is now the, the GM of the Classic Wallabies. So this is a 6XL, so it's 2XL <laughs> short of where Morgs needs to be. But, <laughs> I mean, what what product that is. It's amazing. Is that, is that, that, is that bin look? chicken? I reckon that's... It's uh, got a bin chicken on it. 6XL, it's like a midriff on you, Sean. <laughs> you <laughs> know what? <laughs> I've got my jacket on. <laughs> Your people were calling for you to wear a moo moo. Um, <laughs> you know what? We, we might get to try and get a photo of Morgan. Mate, they're in that, so uh, good. Of course, the next couple of but days. But no, he's doing great stuff yeah. with the classic wallabies. Yeah. He's out here at the moment learning to ski, so. Yeah. yeah. No, he's, he's a great man. I actually, my first ever cap for the wallabies, I replaced Morgs in the 45th minute. We're playing the, uh, the South Africans in Sydney. 45th minute, he came off with cramp. <laughs> Five minutes after half time, where you get all the, the gels and the food and the drinks. I think and five had, minutes later, you get I think all had, the crap. I think you had the half time wallabies full time set up in the double. Maybe. Job done. <laughs> oh, no, he's a great man, Morgs. It's time to check in the Aussie Rugby Show mailbag and see what's happening there. Thank you so much for sending all your questions in. I'm going to take charge of everything this week. Uh, first off, let's go with this one uh, from Gordon Roger Burns. Thanks so much. Gordy. After TJ Perinara saying Super Rugby, Aotearoa is not viable long term, he is clearly missing the tours. Where are your favourite places to tour in either Super Rugby or internationally? Just quickly on that, that's actually a pretty... No, a relevant point as well. Yep. Whether the New Zealand rugby hierarchy listen to a, a, like a senior player like TJ yep. saying it's not a viable um, competition from from their behalf. But anyway, more important things. Favorite tour destination. I think you have to go a long way to find a Super Rugby player that wouldn't say Cape Town. Yeah, Cape Town. Cafe Caprice, La Med. Yeah. Oh, favorite place I've Giovanni. been. Giovanni's. Giovanni's Cafe. Oh, oh, the Thai plum chicken there. Mm. And that that I always said. Cape Town when I was playing Super Rugby, got to go to some amazing places. Robben Island. Yeah, I got to go to Portugal was a great place we went to at one yeah. stage before a World Cup. But yeah. Most recently, I, I say Vancouver. Vancouver's Vancouver epic. Vancouver for the Sevens was amazing. Like, I love the ski fields and, like, the midweek games, watching the Canucks play. Like, how they do sport over there, I just thought Vancouver as a town was, yeah. without doubt, one of the best I've been at. Good poutine there, too. Yep. Oh, get yourself a face full of poutine. poutine. Yes. Yeah. Nice. Uh, I'll, go, I'll just go Hong Kong. Yeah. Hong Kong. <laughs> As if you remember anything from Hong Kong. Well, sure. The bits I can't remember. You know good. you've been Hong Kong, especially in Parliament. Oh, yeah, he's got the stamp. <laughs> I don't know who stamped it or who took it there, but it's been stamped. And the tattoo on your palm. <laughs> well, uh, Hosley, you mentioned the Sevens Tour in Vancouver, and uh, Kate Lorimer, who's yes. a sort of for, former colleague of ours and, and works on the Sevens Tour as well, she wrote a question in as well. She wanted to know, she knew we were coming up here, and wants to know what's your go-to favourite road trip tune that you oh. pump out in the car? I've gone big on Garth Brooks and Luke Combs in the yeah, last month. You've got I've gone big proper country in, in during That's COVID. Song? Yeah, I'll go um, when it rains it pours. Luke Combs, listen to it. Wow. You like it, Drew? Yep. I'll give it a go. Uh, you know what? I actually had a bit more of a somber kind of just like mood in my car. I came down alone because none of you guys want to drive with me. Um, but I, I'm a bit of Leon Bridges, River. Yep. Yeah. Take me to the river. Mm. Yeah, no, we don't need you to sing it. Yeah. I guess we so. Get, yeah. the oh, great, we had to really get into it there. <laughs> the great or bad thing, depending on which way you look at it, was Lake George flooded on the way down, so my car trip took 15 hours. Mate, but um, the good thing is so you I were burnt. also flooded. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you were driving, Sean. <laughs> well, when, I'm, when, I'm, uh, when I'm touring in the car, nothing better than just blasting some Nirvana. If you're on your own Nirvana or old school Metallica, <laughs> just sing that loud. On your own, you know what I'm saying? Yep. And a Sam. And we got next, That's his brilliant um, road race. What? Why are Rangers so overrepresented in Oz Is rugby? Is that the right term? That's from Big Rocks. So Big it's Rocks. an offensive question, and we're probably going to answer it in an offensive manner. So I, my theory on it is that as a young 
child, parents are trying to teach resilience and they stand up for yourself. So they you throw them into you a, feel like they're going to cop it. They throw them into a team contact sport. That's what I personally <laughs> think. And Brad Wilkin is a great example. Look at the resilience he's shown. <laughs> yeah. Five reconstructions, and he's still going, making all of the rangers proud. I've got a little nephew named Kobe who's absolutely blood red. He doesn't want a bar of any team sport. He's into BMX, so he's going to have some rage coming out at some point. <laughs> I, I, I hazard to step into this space because our mate, uh, the doctor, He's not big on being isolated as a red-headed man and he doesn't like the chat, so <laughs> he's I'm more than just a fur because I don't know whether it's the colour of his hair. Yeah, yeah. Okay. fair enough. And this one isn't a question as such, but something that I saw over the weekend, a lot of people talking about, maybe off the back of Matt Tamua's performance for the Rebels on Friday night, but people talking about who your, your sort of 10-12 combination is looking like for the Wallabies. We spoke about a bit about the back row last week, but that's a question that I think I'm going to throw to you guys. What do you think? Well, last week I, I did say... Pete Simon's number eight. I thought Nasirani played himself back into contention. Yeah. He was outstanding the other night. So yeah, that, again, trying to get Rebels, the Rebels yeah, get back on the side. Yeah. Um, but I think number 12 has to be Matty Tamua. And if we're going to blood a lot of these young guys yeah. which we're talking about, you want experience in and around your 10 yeah, and 12. For sure. So I, th I was a big fan of Lola Seo early on, but he's been injured and he'll be injured for the majority of the season. So you might see him somewhere in and around the squad. But Matt, probably James O'Connor and Matt yeah, Tamua yeah, early on. Yeah, I agree. I think that's, at the moment, that's, I mean, you know what? I think maybe John O'Lance could be a shout. To be yeah. there, like at least in the squad, I think he's been tremendous with the Western Force as well. Just the way he's yeah, controlled them, and, and a team that, you know, ne haven't necessarily been as dominant as some of the other teams, like, but doing really good things from a team that's, you know, chasing a yeah. game or or whatever. Mm -hmm. I think he's been really strong. If you think halfback's going to be young or new, who, no matter who it is, because Genie is gone, he's yeah. playing club rugby mm -hmm. as well, which is awesome. You got Jake Gordon, Tate McDermott, so you're going to have an, a new nine somewhere, an inexperienced nine. You're going to have the likes of Patea. Even like James Ram was outstanding. So you're going to have a young backline. So I think the more experience you can put in those key positions, even, the better. Even looking even further up front, like second rows, there's not a huge amount yep. of experience there. Talking, coming down with the lineout calls, what lineouts you want, where you want the ball to do yep. the delivery. Sorry. So having experience in around that sort of core decision making roles, I think, is really vital. Yep. Uh, weekend forecast. Where can we find you guys this weekend? Uh, Gina Bynum Base Hospital. Yeah, I was going to say I'm going to find Sean um, either on an IV drip hydrating or in the hospital getting an ACL MCL reconstruction. Oh, geez, well, I, hope, I hope you don't get injured, Sean. I'm not gonna. You just said we said about those poor people's wrists. <laughs> uh, you know what? I'm just going to have another quiet weekend. Just, I'm just, August is about health and well-being yeah. for me. Another juice cleanse? No, no, another, another juice snaps. cleanse. Yeah, yeah. 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 Brumby Actually, yeah. 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 Where's the going to be, Drew? I'm, uh, well, I'll, I'll tell you where I'm going to be. Yeah. I'm going to be, no, thank you. I'll be uh, at Shoot Shield. <laughs> Take it away. I'll be at uh, Shoot Shield on Saturday, and I'm doing a brekkie shift at the ABC. Saturday, Sunday as well, so it's a big working you know, weekend. Quickly on Shoot Shield, what about Gordon on the weekend? Oh. Unbackable favourites to win the title. What were you calling com complete oh, performance? Dominant Pretty performance. Good. Mate, is that because yeah. your head coach from the Giltinis is there? Maybe. Yeah, maybe trying to put a bit <laughs> of pressure on Gordon early. But... <laughs> How many of those Gordon players are going to get a gig? <laughs> yeah, no, they were hard good. Hard to say. Classic hard to say. <laughs> well, let's, uh, cheers, to cheers to that. A great episode, yeah. Yes. yeah good good well, effort. Good effort. We would have saved ourselves. And the Wild Brumby snaps. No one else probably will. The Wild Brumby snaps. Wild Brumby Thank you. Thank you. Thanks so much for your company again guys. Thanks to Perisher for having us here as well. Sean Maloney, Stephen Hurls, Drew Mitchell, I'm Louise Ransom. We'll see you next time for the Aussie Rugby Show.